President Mohamed Buhari writes Senate for supplementary budget of 2.557 trillion naira to end fuel subsidy in 2022. President Vladimir Putin says Russia does not want a war in Europe, but described the situation in East Ukraine's breakaway regions as genocide and called for the conflict there to be resolved through the Minsk peace process. And as always, we will be taking a look at the national dailies and have a guest join the conversation. Very good morning to you watching The Breakfast on Plus TV Africa. We're back for another morning of interesting conversations right here on Plus TV Africa. I'm Kofi Bartels. And I am Messi Bokpo. It promises to be an amazing time of great conversation as you stay tuned with us. Fantastic, fantastic. Mercy, the queues are still there. You know, the, uh, the few queues are, uh, uh, especially in Lagos. Um, in Abuja, had, you know, we have reports of uh, residents of the FCT trekking. Um, you have some of the black market salespeople selling fuel for between 400 naira per litre and 1,000 naira per litre. And um, for those who are in other parts of the country who don't who have fuel, we can send you know, some to us in, La in Lagos. Um, quite a lot of people come reporting that they were finding it difficult to, um, you know, to get home on time because of the traffic situation exacerbated by the fuel queues. And of course, uh, this morning also people were reporting that they are finding it difficult to make their way to work because of the traffic situation, once again exacerbated by uh, the fear queue. So, uh, well, we're back to talk again. I'm sure we'll have something in the papers, but um, we have interesting conversations. The uh, situation in Ukraine, and of course, we also have uh, conversations um, on um, the presidential move to, um, you know, increase the budget or to rather amend the um, the, the budget. But we, we will start with our top trending stories today. Quite interesting one, Messi. What's happening in, uh, in southwest Nigeria? Well, it's a feud between uh, Rauf Aragba Shola uh, blasting Bola Akma Tunubu um, and all of that as regards the elections that's going to happen in Oshun State. But if you see what's actually going on, uh, the conflict, it's, it's just a conflict of Godfatherism and the politics of Godfatherism that constantly happens and uh, the back and forth. Now, some comments were being made. Some people say uh, it is totally unfair because it feels like Arabe Sholar is biting the finger that's actually fed him. And so the issue of loyalty. But it brings us back to one conversation. Whose interest uh, is this conflict, you know, rising from? Whose interest that they're arguing about? because it's a situation where you have a regular Shola wanting to have a stooge and both parties at the end of the day is an interest. And you know what happens when you have a political stooge. So whoever pays the piper would dictate the, the tune. And, and uh, that has actually not made you know, the political system and the policies that we constantly have. Because at the end of the day, this policies of government, when you have the, the politics of Godfather, and I know a lot of people will constantly argue that um, you know, the politics of Godfatherism it's not necessarily uh, just uh, in the Nigerian climate. I mean, it's not just in the Nigerian political scene. It cuts across the entire, you know, the globe. So different parts of the world, you have them practicing this kind of politics. But that's exactly what's happening. Who becomes what? And so, so it's, a, it's, it's, it's a conflict of, uh, you know, having two powerful people, uh, you know, in the system. Yeah. And uh, that's exactly what's actually going on. Mm. Indeed, indeed. Um, uh, I think for, for me, I, I noticed a, a bit of a, an issue stemming from the APC state congresses, you know, where you had um, uh, the, the, the party organizing its congresses from, you know, the ward level, um, local government, and then the state congresses in the different states of the federation. Um, and uh, it became clear that, you know, there were factions amongst the APC in the state chapters. You know, in some states you had parallel congresses where the, the official congress was held to elect a state executive and another congress was held to elect another executive and so on and so forth. Um, so so in, in Oshun State also, um, it was discovered that you had a, a, a faction of the APC in that state that was um, loyal to the governor of uh, Oshun State, um, Governor Oyetola, and another faction that was loyal to the Eswa governor of Oshun State, Arabeshola. And so around states, even if you go to Kwara State, you see that 
uh, Lai Mohammed has his faction. So you have the ministers and government appointees or former governors who want to, who are you know power brokers in the APC who want to continue to exert themselves, exert influence, and uh, call the shots. And then you have the governors, the incoming governors, who feel that they should be the ones calling the shots. So, for instance, in 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 Kwara State, you had um, what do you call it, uh, uh, Lai Mohammed, wanting to be in charge. You know, and uh, he has his faction. What will basically control things, and they're not having his way. You know, there are other states around the federation where we have these things, you know, popping up. In some states, the APC may not necessarily be in charge, but you have, for instance, in Akwa Ibom State, where Akpan Odoide was, is the um, the secretary of the external convention and uh, 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 you know, uh, Ketika and external convention and planning committee, the CPC. C. Oh, it's kind of difficult to remember now. So, so, so you have that in Aquabom State. Um, he's there. You have a, what do you call it again? Former um, aide to the president on legislative matters. He's also there. That's former senator. Um, um, trying to remember his name. And then a minister, um, um, Gotsilak Pabio. You see, these power brokers were always fighting against each other. And I think um, the fact that uh, uh, Ayatollah's faction really pulled through um, may have been also an, an issue in Oshun State. Um, you know, regarding regarding that, so it's it's quite interesting. I remember some time ago um, that uh, uh, the the current the former governor of Washington State had to apologize, if I'm not mistaken, to Tinubu. If 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 a listeners will remember, I think he even went to prostrate at a point to say, "I'm sorry, I need to, I, I I need to check check that footage. I'm sure it was him." But this is not the first time. Um, back to February, early February, it was reported that Oyetola's faction, or camp rather, had flooded the Arabe Shola's faction in court. You know, so it's been ongoing. Um, all this was still down to the state congresses, local government congresses, and ward congresses uh, of the APC, where Justice Emmanuel uh, Ayola of the Federal High Court in Oshobo, Oshun State, um, struck out a case filed against the validity, validity of those congresses. So, um, you know, aggrieved members of the party loyal to Ralph Obershaw have been trying to get there. And I think, I think we cannot divorce what's happening from the tussle to control the APC in Oshun State. So, but at the end of the day, you just find that, that outrightly there's been some comment that's been accredited to Raul Farag Beshola, even though some people say he, uh, he did not make those kind of statements saying, oh, they are urinating on themselves uh, already. Uh, that's, that's during one. the campaign and all of that. Some people say that's a very, very horrible thing to say, despite whatever it is. But if you see the blast, at the end of the day, uh, you find out that at some point that uh, Bola Ahmed Tunubu has been responsible for him becoming, uh, you know, a time... Uh, what he became in Oshu State. And so what's really going on, like I mentioned earlier on, it's just, you know, two political uh, interests. You have interest because at the end of the day, everyone is looking for who becomes the stooge, uh, who becomes the next governor. Of course, you also have a regular saying, uh, uh, we will ensure that nobody becomes a god, we'll remove them. That's paraphrasing, you know, some of the things that were being said, yeah, not wanting yeah, to have yeah. a particular person control mm -hmm. the Southwest as it is. But people have also accused him saying, oh yes, uh, we don't remember the time where you actually called out the government. I mean, you called out bad policies and bad things that actually happen in the state. And the issue of oil pollution in the state still, it's ongoing. So the big question here is, whose interest is all of this blast and fighting and attacks going for? Because uh, at the end of the day, you find out that everybody has an interest who becomes governor of the state. And because if you dictate who becomes governor, then you find out that the policies will not always reflect the interest of the people. It would be the doings of, you know, those who actually install this stooge. And, and, and really, really sad. But that has constantly dominated, you know, the political scene. But fingers crossed. Yeah. And we see how all of these yeah. things you know, unfold. You know, before we move on, you know, one of the, the interesting aspects of this is people have said, you know, these two are really friends. If you, you go online, you see recently pictures have been shared, throwback pictures, you know, while the build-up to the whole campaign of Tinubu and Go, you know, throwback pictures of um, uh, a younger Bola Mitinubu back in the day, um, you'd see the likes of uh, Vice President Emi Oshibajo there. You see the likes of um, um, a BRF, Babatuni Raji Fashal, who's a minister for Works and Housing there. Um, you'd see uh, Rav Arabeshal are also there as well. And some have said, you know what, this man has been uh, good to you, that seen will good to uh, Arabeshal. You're not from Lagos State, and he made you commissioner in Lagos State because you're part of his circle. And from being commissioner, you know, he supported you to become the governor of Oshun State. 
And so he's, he's, he's basically made you who you are, so simple as saying. He's so, basically made you who you are. And so you shouldn't be biting the finger or the hand that fed you, you know, basically. And so th some of these thoughts of, as what people are saying are out there on, 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 on social media and on, on electronic media as well. So I remember one time you saying, you know, it's the issue of politics and that's what always happens. So uh, politics is what's being played as a game oh, of yes, interest. Oh, yes, yes, yes. And yes. however it's, it's the case democracy is... democracy right now. So we, yeah. we have... It's, it, do you they say that democracy... They can do what they want to do. <laughs> no, no, it's, it's politics oh, right. that's being played out because yeah. we're in a democratic dispensation. Absolutely. Or, Absolutely. you know, you constantly have to... But the kind of politics that's being played, like we're seeing, the blast that's still going on or the feud between uh, Raouf Arabek Beshola and the former governor of Lagos State, uh, you want to look at it he was responsible for, I mean, Tunubu was responsible for, it's known that he made him uh, what he became political. I mean, if you look at his political career, you will give credit to him. I'm so, so we're saying that, you this know, this whole loyalist kind of system still continues. Well, at the end of the day, you also find a person who has an interest in the state and wants to control what? Because that's what politics is about, who controls the resources, the state resources, who gets what at what time and at what point. But you know, really, I don't think this is for the interest of the masses, but quite sad. And we hope that we get to a point where, you know, the masses will determine who becomes, you yes, know, the yes. governor of a state yes. and not it, necessarily it, it, having political democracy. godfather, yeah. political godfathers. Yeah. I understand that it's democracy, yeah. but we're saying that a select few persons, I mean, some persons, they're called, they are the elites. They have been put in this class. They're, they are the, the king makers, the, the power brokers, as you want to call them. They sit down and they forestall who they want, you know, to put in the system. And that's because there's an agenda, but when you have this person, you already know that he that pays the piper will dictate the tune, and so that's what happens. They begin to do their biddings, and so you see policies that at the end of the day do not reflect the interest of the people, and this has constantly crippled, you know, the entire economy and the political system. I mean, look at Oshun State. You will not say that they're not, you know, they're, they're without no troubles, and how come a regular is calling, uh, you know, uh, Bola, I mean, because he said that he doesn't want the interest of Oshun people, but does he really care about the Oshun people? I mean, how, how far has he spoken all the while? Mm. But, well, we definitely need to move on. And what next are we going to be looking at? Mm. So, so, you know, the, 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 we we'll look at what, uh, how that moves on. But we also brought you in a story regarding um, uh, a village that was burnt down in Kaduna by a suspected militia. Um, and, of course, if you've been following what's been happening in Kaduna, you know, especially the southern Kaduna, um, we've been seeing uh, sort of um, uh, an ethnic uh, a conflict over there. Uh, with, with hundreds of lives being lost. Um, last week or so, I mean, the governor of Kaduna State, uh, Nasser El Rufai, did come out to, to decry the amount of, of, of you know, people who have been killed, the number of lives, let me say, better put, lost in, in, in the clashes, in the attacks in southern Kaduna. Um, uh, the governor also said, you know, something urgently needs to be done because it's not normal. The, the statistics we've seen, you know, even if one life is lost, it's also uh, really sad. Um, they suspected to be um, uh, Fulani militia, and I say this with a heavy heart because, you know, we always try to downplay um, the ethnic side of things, but that is the report we're having. And um, something needs to be looked to, done to, to really uh, uh, go get to the bottom of this. It can't continue forever. Um, so these suspected militias last night, we told, attacked uh, um, or two nights ago, rather, attacked the Apia Babum village in Atiab Chiefdom uh, in Zangon Kataf local government area of Kaduna State, burning all the houses after killing three persons. You know, burning all the houses after killing three persons uh, on, on Sunday night. Uh, a source from the village said that um, uh, the suspected, um, uh, what do you call it, uh, uh, the suspected militia members uh, fled but returned on Monday night in their large numbers to burn down the entire village. And it's, it's really sad. Uh, almost all the people in the village were told uh, will have to manage sleeping outside their homes, pending when they're able to put up structures that they uh, can rely on. It's, it's really unfortunate what's happening in, in Kaduna State. And we need to have a sense of what is going on. You know, because we hear bandits. We hear headsmen. Now we're hearing militia. So what what is going on? Um, there should be some sort of explanation uh, from the security agencies to say, okay, this is who these people are, who, what is going on. Because, I mean, we're reporting. Reports are coming in from people on the ground, reaching out to the media. This is what's going on. And, but we can't, we can't connect the dots, you know? 
We can't connect the dots. Literally. I, I would say that we haven't been very sincere with the fight against insurgency. We haven't been very sincere with uh, the protection of lives and property, which should be and which is, you know, the core mandate of every government across the globe. It's the primary responsibility. It's the reason why government exists, uh, you know, as an entity. The reason why we have all collectively come together and say mm -hmm. we submit our rights and our wills you know, to a set of person or to uh, a government and say, hey, we will do X, Y, Z, we will pay taxes, mm -hmm. we'll be loyal, we will do this, we'll be patriotic, and in turn, we expect that government would protect us. We, do, we no longer live in a dispensation, and that's why jungle justice has never been argued for, uh, you know, as a plus or a merit in any, in any system. That's why you have. You have government because government needs to provide order. Government needs to pr protect. You can't allow people to take laws into their hands. People can't act anyhow because there would be and that's why the system, that's why government exists. And in the Constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, uh, it is clearly stated, Section 14, if I'm not mistaken, it talks about the reason for protection of lives and property, which would include, you know, I, 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 to what extent? So it, it, it's really worrisome. Uh, whether or not it's militias, whether they are bandits, whatever it is that they call themselves, the thing is lives and properties are not protected. Absolutely. And so you will Absolutely. find that, that um, the argument would be who controls the security architecture of you know, the, the country. You want to talk about the police. Of course, it's in the exclusive because it's sensitive. And that uh, people have constantly said, okay, let's devolve the powers. Let's you know, shed the responsibility and have the state government have control over the police architecture. But it feels like, I mean, it, it is what we can see. You, you have the police whose primary responsibility is to ensure that there's protection of lives and property in a civil society, in a democratic, in a civil... So that, that's the responsibility of the police. And the question is, where, where are the police officers? What's the Nigerian police force mm. across the entire country? In Kaduna State, don't we have police officers? You know, where, what, what about the joint tax yeah. force? There are several joint tax forces that we've had over time, uh, you know, combination of different government has set up everything. What is going on? What is the state government doing? The state governor cannot say that don't, they don't, there's nothing they can do because it's already looking like a helpless situation. That's what it seems right now. And it feels like this persons, category of persons, the militia, the bandits, the Boko Haram, have empowered the Nigeria state, and so we're so helpless, and there's really nothing that we can do. And some quarters have said, let's begin to take up arms to protect ourselves, because it feels like the government has actually failed. And let, you know, the argument where you have governors saying, oh yes, we, we, we can't be responsible because we do not control the security architecture, is a big excuse. As a chief security officer of your state, the primary responsibility, your concern should be about the protection of lives and properties. And if not, then let's get a better explanation to what happens with the security votes that's been gotten. Mm -hmm. So there's no sincerity in the fight against all of this. The president, on the other hand, people have said that, um, you know, constantly they say he's treated some of these issues with kid gloves. I mean, he's not been very, um, you know, harsh. You, you can't see any sincerity in the fight against the security. And so we constantly just fold the arms and then we're waiting for a miracle to happen that can never happen because there's always a human part to every miracle. So it is so sad that every day the lives of Nigerians do not mean anything to anybody, including the governors of this state. And we wake up and we make excuses. So what, what is now the fate of the Nigerian people? Where do they now run to that? Every day lives are being killed, lives are being taken. Mm. And these persons constantly pay taxes. It's so sorry. So you know I always feel that Nigerians should be paid. So I just feel like being a Nigerian is a lot of job. It's a, it's a, it's a job that you, know, you should be put on a salary scale. You should be earning salary for just being a Nigerian. <laughs> It's so much to yeah, bear. I mean, it's, it's, really, it's, uh, maybe I'm getting very emotional. Yeah. I need to put my emotions in check at this point. Yeah, yeah. You know, um, it's 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 a it's a sad situation in in Kaduna State because, uh, I mean, almost it's just about three weeks ago when when Air of, Governor Air of Five Kaduna State, um, you know, he wasn't there in person anyway, but he was represented by a commissioner of his, um, had a, a meeting, security meeting with the uh, uh, village chiefs, traditional rulers. Um, you know, uh, and community leaders from uh, two local government areas, Kauru and Zango Kataf. Mm -hmm. uh, the governor wasn't there, but when he spoke, he said, and this, this was a bombshell, and people started talking about it. And when people talk about Kaduna State, it, a lot of people don't really understand what's going on there. And people, just because of sentiments, just jump into it and start talking. You know, that's why um, some of the headlines that we see, we have to be a bit... Uh, circumspect and, and try to understand the situation. Um, there's a lot of tension between the ethnicities in the area, you know, and um, it's not just a one-way killing. It's both ways, you understand. But 
the governor said something which 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 is a uh, 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 really, really worrying. 387 people killed in two years in just these two local government areas, Zango Kataf and Kauru. And just barely three weeks, you know, after the governor said that, we have this group of people going to Zango Kataf, uh, village in Zango Kataf, LGA, and to burn all the houses there. And you know, most times when these, these, these moves are made, it's reprisal. It means maybe they want to go back and revenge something. So the, the, the ethnic groups there are forming themselves into militias, into you know, into um, local armies of sorts, and attacking each other. You so so, so it's, it's 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 um, a situation that um, you ask. I mean, can't government do anything about this? When El Rufai, governor of Kaduna State, meets with the chiefs, traditional rulers, religious rulers, or leaders rather, and community leaders, and tries to appeal to them. Um, to be more tolerant of each other and uh, not to continue the killings and counter killings that they are unjustifiable. You see a governor who um, doesn't have the power to, to, to do much, you ask him, does he have power to do much more than just talk to the traditional religious uh, and community leaders to sit down with them? Is there much more that he, because this is your state, you know. Um, also, some would say that the, the, the um, the statements credited to the former to the governor, um, his utterances and his um, body language may not have given people confidence, especially outside Kaduna State, that um, he is being fair or is being hands-on mm. to solve this situation. Just like what's happening, not not exactly what's happening in, in Benue State, but a bit of you know the Benue governor keeps talking and talking and pushing the blame to the federal government, but. Um, the, 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 the neutrality of El Rufai, some people have questioned that because of his, um, his statements. You know that northern and southern Kaduna are not just divided along ethnic lines, but also to a large extent religious lines. So mm -hmm. you have Christians in, uh, in Kaduna State as well. In, uh, he is Muslim. You know, so um, this, 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 this suspicion has been there in the public. That's why people always ah, dismiss what El Rufai but says, you know. So, so, for, so, so for me, I totally understand that you have different kind of conflicts. So you have uh, conflict from um, ethnic crisis, differences, and what have you. And that's why I say government exists. Government exists for this purpose, because these things will happen. Government cannot just wake up and say two ethnic groups are, so they are fighting. So uh, don't we have the police? Don't we have system to resolve all of this? Uh, don't we have system to resolve the conflict and boundary issues? We, mm. we know that boundary and conflict and you know, uh, land issues would always arise. It has always existed. But we can't just act as if it's mission impossible. It is not mission impossible. I remember on this platform we've had a conversation right here, and I'm sure at that time you weren't here, where we spoke to different parties from these different you know, um, communities. And then these persons where you, you have this group of persons say, saying, uh, we're not, uh, these persons kill our cows, we didn't kill them, or they did this and they did not do this. And you, you can hear people saying, oh, we did this or we're doing this because our cows were killed, they attacked us. The, po the question is, mother is mother. Who are these persons committing this crime? And Kofi Batels, to say that these people do not leave, my question is these people do not leave in, it's like you have a family, but I'll finish up with that thought. These people do not live in a space. They don't live in space. They don't live in the moon. And even in the moon, people will actually go to the moon and go to space. So they can be found. So if you have different communities, you know, perpetrating all of these crimes, committing murder, how come the security apparatus, the people who should make arrests, who should ensure that there's law and order, has, have actually failed in doing that? That's where the question lies. So we know that Conflict would actually come from different issues. So you, this, is, this is a conflict where you have you know, different tribes uh, having this clash for whatever reason it is. But the law does not permit that you take, <laughs> you take uh, you know, the Life. laws into your hands Life. by killing another life. So if, if there's any grievances or any dispute or whatever, there's a system that this can actually be resolved. And so these persons who commit all of these crimes live in our society. We know them. They are our uncles, they are our brothers, but we have constantly tolerated them. And that's why we have emboldened all of this. I don't think it's an excuse when we say we don't know when we call the tradition. The traditional rulers, at some point you begin to ask, because before we became an entity called Nigeria, we had a way of administering our government. We had a system where you had um, traditional rulers playing a major role, where they were where you had peace in different communities and where people, uh, you had a system of policing where you had the youths and what have you. And so um, the role also of traditional rulers, we can't take that out entirely. So what are they doing in all of this? Is it that we don't know the people who are killing? If somebody has killed somebody, it's a crime in the law. The criminal code states that. And so 
the, the point is the law, there's no implementation of the law. There's no arrest. People are not being arrested. Because somebody killed your cow does not mean you should kill another person. And so when you have the attacks and reprisal attacks and then government is saying, oh, there's really nothing we can do because that's what it's, it feels like and that's how it sounds like. We're helpless. And so this, let them continue the fight. So what's the essence of governance? So let all of us continue to fight. I, I, imagine that there's, there's some conflict you know, in the office and you don't have a system, then you have to you know, probably take something and go very violent. That's what we were saying, that government has, has missed it. Yeah, I, I think uh, we'll have to move on at this point. It's a, it's a, um, a you know, unfortunate situation. In Kaduna State, um, uh, if you have 387 people killed in, in just two local government areas, um, is it maybe not time for um, a solution, a hard-hitting solution? Uh, we know what happened in, uh, in Plateau State in the time, I think, of Joshua Dari as governor. And... Uh, uh, Olusha Gobasanjo <laughs> as president, and um, uh, maybe maybe it's time for such a solution to be employed in in in, in Plateau State. Um, it's time for politics in in Kaduna State. Sorry, it's time for politics to go out the window and the right thing to be done, which may be maybe uh, as an emergency situation could be declared in if it's just maybe these two local government areas. You understand? He declared. And, and then quell the tension. This is not a situation that can be solved by arresting people because it's whole communities and whole tribes against whole tribes. So you don't solve this problem by arresting people. You can arrest and you won't have space in the prisons. You have to de-escalate, call the leaders, sit them down and talk. Is it that leaders of these communities are not listening to the governor or not? Because he said that they should stop. He's met with them. And even though he didn't meet with them directly, but... De-escalation yeah, yeah. so, so, so doesn't is it, seem is, to solve is, the problem. Is it that he... They, I mean, the message is not getting to them. Or is that they're not able to talk to their, their youth to stop these killings? So I think maybe it's about time that uh, an emergency situation is, is, is declared in that part of, at least, if not the whole of Kaduna State, that part. You know, but hopefully, if such an emergency situation is declared, um, it also will be necessary for the, the military to be impartial, you know, to be uh, neutral. In, in, in that instance, you know, because even some of the tribes of those who are involved in the killings, um, they have their, their kinsmen in the army. And um, it's not new to hear people complain that some soldiers are being partial to their brothers in conflict. So this is what, what they have to look out for. And we do hope for the best um, and a resolution in, in, in Kaduna State. We have to move on. We have um, up next uh, a look at what happened today in history. And of course, when we come back, we'll dive straight into what the national dailies have on their front pages in of the press. We'll be right back. <laughs> 